Switch, PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. This is an LGBT controller, but instead of changing its pronouns every week, it's all of them all of the time. It's even called the Rainbow Pro 2. <laughs> the best way to describe the Rainbow Controller is a wireless Razor Wolverine Tournament Edition with a faster response time, which won't make sense to half of you, but we'll get to it. We have a versatile set of unique features here for between $65 and $80, depending on the variant you get. And for once, it's not just limited to Switch. Now, for transparency's sake, this is the first time I've ever been paid to do a review, but this is actually going to be, and I, I can't even believe I'm saying this, but this is the very first video on YouTube that's sponsored, that's honest. At least it will be if they approve this video. If they don't like the honesty, then I, I guess, no, I, the, I'll be the one watching this. Now say it with me, class. Thank you, Big Big One. You've been very kind. The Pro 2, as previously stated, is all 7,000 genders and has various connectivity methods. Here I am using it on GayStation 4. You guys would be surprised how many PS4s still roam this planet. I see them all the time. Sometimes they come barreling through this house. They're on this desk. They infect my desk with PlayStation 4 dust and shit. Oh, it's disgusting. Here I am using an Xbox One. The difference here is that you actually need to have an Xbox One controller connected to the adapter wired in order for this controller to work. And according to this review from VK's channel, it does work on Xbox Series X and PS5, as long as you have a controller connected, which means realistically it's only usable out of the box on PC, PS4, and Nintendo Switch. So, so what do you think of the controller you just used? My honest review? Yes. It's okay. It's got like Xbox con button configuration, but... Yeah, the right configuration. <laughs> <laughs> While that is a mildly autistic way to go about uh, connectivity, I can't really criticize them for this as much as I'd like to because they actually do mention on their website, alongside the fact that it's compatible with Xbox One and Series X, that you do need a controller connected for that to work. So it's not like they're getting one over on you. The wired 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth connections all have separate response times and separate uses. And you'll likely wanna stay with the USB-C wired or the 2.4 gigahertz if you wanna remain as fast as possible. Bluetooth, as always, is like the telegraph. For being on par with Disney and its level of diversity, the Pro 2 is relatively cheap at just about 65 bucks. Or for an additional $15, you can get a set of mixed height swappable thumbsticks, a circular swappable D-pad, and an RGB wireless charging dock. That actually isn't wireless, it's wired, because it needs a wire, because wireless charging is a fucking scam. Not a problem with the controller, the tech industry as a whole. Don't get that twisted. And no, the dock's RGB cannot be customized. This dual price scheme thing is the same uh, idea behind Microsoft and their Elite Series 2 core, which gives you the Elite Series 2 controller, minus all of the accessories, you know, like the fucking paddles. And even though it's half its price, the Pro 2, just like the Elite Series 2, can have custom profiles created in the software and saved on board on the controller that you can swap to on the fly using the media module. Now, why does that seem so familiar? This can also be used to remap any of the four extra buttons, create a macro, or bind a turbo on the fly. If you look closely, there's a headphone jack attached to that, and it works wirelessly, I might add. It sounds better than at least half of my wired controllers, so yeah, um, all the Switch controllers that are headphone jackless can just eat cat shit. Anyways, the underside of the controller features two of the four extra buttons, some decent two-way trigger stops, and a very high quality rubber grip. Up top, there's a mildly clicky D-pad, normal mush ABXY buttons, and Alps thumbsticks that are just filled to the brim with marketing terms, which is always just so much fun. And finally, the Pro 2 comes equipped with a piece of software, in this case, a mobile app, where you can assign macros or turbos to certain inputs, full button remapping, including keyboard inputs, which I know you guys are crazy about. You can change stick dead zones and create custom response curves, modify the motion controls to a great extent, change the response time of the wired connection, and you get some of the best RGB options of any controller I've seen, which includes gradients like the one I have here. Now. Let's move on to some more important matters. What's good? Fuck is this. I thought Razer would forever be the only people ever capable of doing something that insane, but it seems that Big Big One has revived the button layout from the Razer Wolverine Tournament Edition from 2017. Two on the front with two on the bottom, and yes, the two on the front feel absolutely great. And if you can acclimate to them, they are wonderful for shooters if you remap your triggers to them. However, I do anticipate that taking a lot of getting used to. These buttons take a lot of getting used to 
period, no matter what you use them for. The same can't really be said for the two rear buttons, which are ergonomically perfect. They're a lot like any two button controller out there. The only difference with these is that underneath them are kale black and white micro switches, which are rated for 1 million clicks and sound just as obnoxious as they look, but in a good gamery way. Using all these buttons isn't too much of a challenge, and it's very rewarding when you do. The four extra buttons pair very nicely with the trigger stops underneath, although I will say they only do their job as well as the average Burger King employee, which is like 60%-ish. The stopping distance is all right, but it definitely could be improved. I again think the dead zones are probably doing more for the actual swiftness of the trigger than the trigger pull length, but they're not as bad as the trigger stops and power controller, so they get a pass. They're not literally the worst, and, and to be honest, they're not that bad. They just don't do as much as I'd expect them to. Fortunately, the bumpers use some very, very nice, stable 6x6 tack switches, and they feel very crisp. I thought I'd mention them. Since, you know, usually bumpers are extremely fluffy and I'm always bitching about it. These, on the other hand, very responsive, very short click, 10 out of 10. Now, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, I'm probably incorrect about this, but by my calculations, we're about five minutes into this review. I didn't bring this up earlier because it pisses people off, and there's a chance less people are going to see it now, but yes, this isn't an anti-stick drift controller, and, and people, for whatever reason, get very upset when I'm not looking at anything that has Hall Effect sticks. I'm personally of the opinion that there are still quite a few controllers out there that use normal Alps thumbsticks that are more than worth purchasing, especially since Hall Effect sticks are in their infancy. As good as they are right now, they could be a lot better. These thumbsticks, in terms of their actual performance in-game, feel much better than some of the Hall Effect controllers I've looked at, like the Machinite controllers. The 12-month warranty covers the thumbsticks, and you know, sometimes they last longer than a year, like 12 months and 4 days. The Pro 2 can't stop drift, but it does have something called a, like, adaptive calibration. I think it was explained to me, like, you, you take the center of the stick when it re-centers, after like six points, and then you find the center of those points, I'm not sure. They also claim to have a 12-bit axis that has a higher resolution that I can't test because the controller won't work in VDX. What the hell ever, marketing bullshit aside, man. The thumbsticks feel fine, but they're a little strange. Even with the dead zone turned all the way down in the software, it still kind of feels like there's a built-in dead zone of between five and 10% there. It isn't the worst. Again, Machinite controllers feel much worse, but it still takes a little bit of adjusting to and doesn't feel as refined as it claims in my opinion. The tension or physical resistance of the sticks is also on par with other Alps thumbstick controllers at about 45 grams of force. And the full metal jacket thumbsticks are paired very nicely with some thick plastic anti-friction rings making for a very smooth glidey experience. Providing you pay the $15 premium for the accessories, you can actually swap the sticks out for something a little taller if you'd like. Although both the mid-rise and high-rise sticks are they're both high-rise sticks, so if you want something a little bit shorter, I'd recommend a low-rise PlayStation Control Freak. They also included a circular D-pad alongside the thumbsticks, and I find it quite nice to use, especially since the membrane 6x6 switches used for the D-pad are actually kind of tactile. They're not even trying, and their D-pad feels infinitely better than the one Mashonite put on their G5 Pro, and that one literally uses kale switches. The ABXY buttons feature normal membrane switches, so they feel very average. And if you look very closely, there are graphics in the center of the ABXY buttons just in case your brain is decaying and you need to visually see the incorrect ABXY button layout that Nintendo chose. While we're here, there is one unmentioned feature on the faceplate that I didn't bring up earlier, and that is the FN button, which is used to do a multitude of some pretty cool things. Volume controls for windows, vibration intensity, and you can activate simulated motion controls. There are more settings for that in the software if needed, but I'd say the the gyro is serviceable when it's absolutely necessary. If I'm honest, it's not terribly accurate and doesn't do a great job of keeping track of the controller. It's comparable to those stupid little dogs that people buy when they don't want to admit they're just cat people. You know, the ones that run out of the house the instant they get the chance, and then they get lost, and they're the loudest dogs even though they're about that big. Anyways, I got sidetracked. Like I always say, 
Uh, if you're looking for gyro on PC, PlayStation controllers are basically unbeatable. So with everything that's been said here in this little shitty video of mine, have I wasted your time, or is this a decent purchase? Now, to get the horseshit out of the way, uh, for being universal, or universal, I expected more in the usability department. The fact that you can't use the controller on its own, at least on Xbox One, Series X, or PS5 means I can only realistically recommend it for the PlayStation 4, the Nintendo Switch, and PC. Which isn't actually as bad as it seems, because that means this competes with a lot of Switch controllers, which like I said, you know, you have the headphone jack, and then you have things like the Vader 3 Pro, where the software is only available on PC alone, which essentially makes it a PC controller, but this is cheaper. The four button layout's nice, the response time is amazing. The ability to map keyboard inputs is highly sought after on my channel. It has swappable sticks and a D-pad. The software is spectacular when it's working properly. I think this is actually a really good recommendation for PC and Switch, and I suppose if you still use it, the decrepit, old, has-been, malnourished, decaying PlayStation 4. Oh, I forgot loud. Loud as shit. Every PS4 I've seen in the past five years has turned its thermal paste into notebook paper and sounds like a Boeing 747. You know, it almost feels like I cheated with this video. I was literally paid to uh, review a device that I was aware wasn't going to be terrible, but I was pleasantly surprised that I actually thoroughly enjoyed this thing. It may not be perfect, and I wish the universal aspect of it was a little more universal. And yeah, it isn't a Hall Effect anti-stick drift controller, but like 90% of things aren't. I mean, I reviewed the DualSense Edge. There is a lot going for it here, and I think mainly it competes with Switch controllers because you could just plug the dongle into the Switch and it just works. The same thing with PlayStation 4 and PC. I think it's very nice. Anyways, Big Big One, I'd like to give you a huge thank you to sending this controller out this controller out. And if you'd like to do this again, whenever you have a refresh of this device or a new one, let me know. It came out of nowhere, but this is pretty competent. I'm actually very surprised. To be honest, I'm surprised when any of these controllers are good. That scuff controller, dude, I'm not going to show it because I'm getting paid in this video, but that scuff controller, hoo wee. Did you see the price tag? I'm heading out. I love you guys. I hope you love this video. It was a lot of fun to put together, and if you did go on to enjoy it, ah, uh, you know, there's shit down below. I, it's fucking, ever since they turned the red subscribe button gray, it doesn't fucking matter anymore. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace out.